If you want to manage this alongside this and this, well, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to break down how you can effectively manage your nutrition as a hybrid athlete. Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to the solution on how you can effectively manage your nutrition as a hybrid athlete. So if you like to balance strength training, bodybuilding training with any sort of endurance, cardiovascular work, then this is the solution for you. And you no longer need to pray to the gods for the answers as I have them right here. We're going to run through things as a presentation as I talk through it. So it's going to be quite an informative video. Don't expect too much action packed high mountains, open water, or anything of that sort. For those of you that might be new around here, it's probably important to give you a little bit of context on myself, because you're probably wondering, who's this guy to tell us how to effectively manage our nutrition as a hybrid athlete? Well, let me tell you, I would probably call myself a hybrid athlete, as there's certain things that I've achieved that would probably put me in that category. As far as I'm aware, I am one of two people on the planet that has successfully squatted 500 pounds and ran a sub five minute mile in the same day evidence for you just there, with a video that you can go watch on my channel just here. On the same premise, exactly one year later, I decided to follow the same number pattern and do a 1,200 pound powerlifting total the same day as a sub 12 hour Ironman distance triathlon. Evidence just here, as well as video just here. But of course, do go and watch these at the end of this video. Thank you very much. And then because I wasn't quite done and there was a completely arbitrary holy trifecta of events that I wanted to achieve. December last year, I hit 600 kilos as a powerlifting total across squat, bench, and deadlift into a sub six hour, 60 kilometer ultra marathon. Evidence just here, and video just here, alongside a whole load of other things, but there is an archive on YouTube that you can dig into yourself. So that is enough context on myself as an individual. If you are new around here, or if you're not new around here, and you just like to lurk in the shadows and pop out every once in a while, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as hit the like button, which was meant to be the first thing I was gonna say, hence the thumbs up, but why don't you just take this, drag it onto your computer mouse or phone and hit like, cheers, thank you, appreciate it, nice one. And drop your comments with thoughts, feelings, or any additional suggestions as we go, but I thought we'll just get right into it. So PowerPoint presentation, seven points to run through, let's go. So the disgruntled, out of breath, rather downtrodden looking man on the screen probably needs no introduction at this point, as you've all subscribed, cheers. But Omnia Performance is probably worth an introduction. It is myself and Jonathan Payne, my personal coach of five years coaching business. We are very fortunate to have over 600 athletes worldwide sort of running our programs from one-to-one -one stuff all the way through to just standard 16-week training programs. If at any stage you think that any of this is exciting to you, then hit the top link in the description down below and you can explore ways in which you might be able to level up your hybrid training yourself. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's run through the nutrition strategy that we implement with all of our clients. So we're going to run through seven points on how you can nail your nutrition. Number one, establishing your baseline. Number two, macronutrients. Number three, approach number one, which is our daily intake, and approach number two, which is our weekly intake. And both of those follow the premise of balancing the books, as it were. Number five are any key nutrient considerations. Number six will be intra-workout nutrition. And then number seven is a spoken summary, as there is no slide, I am afraid. Well, there is actually. There's a contact slide at the end, so that was a waste of sentences. And it's eating into precious time. Let's move on. So, first thing we want to do is establish your baseline, as that gives us the foundation off which we can work. We are partnered with PH Nutrition at Omnia Performance for all our performance nutrition for our athletes. So we recommend using one of their calculators. I've put top link in description here, but that is in fact a lie. It is the second top link in description. And you want to input your details in there. And we'll just run through it now so it all makes sense. Okay, so once you've hit the second top link in the description, you will find yourself here. And you will find yourself met by the avatar of a very inquisitive looking Liam, who is the founder of PH Nutrition. So why don't you go and say hello to Liam in the comments down below. I'm sure he'll be very pleased to see you. But moving on to the top line information required to get the data that we are looking for. So gender, male, plot twist, I know, age, 26, body weight, 92 kilos, 
and height 181 centimeters, which means that my basal metabolic rate is 2060 calories. So that is my baseline, not accounting for my activity throughout the week, which is important as you are about to find out. Moving on, we account for our non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is measured in daily steps here. This is steps not accounting for running volume. So these are your walking steps throughout the day on a consistent basis. Be honest with yourself here, all of this is a best estimate, so don't manipulate the data to what you want to see on the screen. Be honest about the average across the week and you'll get the best data, best parameters to work within. So for me, it's about six to 10,000 steps at the moment without running. Exercise hours per week, please include lifting sessions here and lifting dominant Metcons if you have any as part of your programming. Basically, don't include cardiovascular slash endurance work or cardio dominant Metcons because that will make sense why. But bottom line here is for this calculation, just include lifting sessions and lifting dominant Metcons. For me at the moment, that is about four hours a week, which is a bit lower than normal, but that's because of the big, hairy, scary, double iron man shaped endurance goal that I'm currently training for. Then moving on to goals, we want to assess what we want to achieve with our body composition and performance and a balance of that. Realistically, I'm at the moment maintenance and based off this scale here, that is what I'd probably call breakthrough training plateau. I know that doesn't say maintenance calories, but this is designed to help you ascertain what your goals are based on the outcomes you're looking for. For me, I'm looking to sit around maintenance, so breakthrough training plateau would be the best way to do that at this stage for this sake of argument. Then this will give you your baseline calorie intake. From there, we can move on to macronutrients. Okay, so moving on to macronutrients, we generally recommend 1.75 grams per kilogram of body weight. For fat, around 0.75 grams per kilogram of body weight and carbs, loosely, whatever is left. So if we are using myself as an example, I weigh 92 kilos, as we've seen, I've put in moderate steps and I've got four hours of lifting a week. This gives me a baseline intake of 2,898 calories. We'll use it in later examples as 2,900 just before anyone comes at me for my maths later on. So using that logic, my protein intake should be 1.75 grams per kilogram of body weight, which gives me 161 grams of protein to consume on a daily basis, which equates to 644 calories worth. Moving on to fat, 0.75 grams per kilogram of body weight leaves 69 grams. Nice. Nice. Which is 621 calories worth. And then carbs, the equation is 2,898, which is my baseline here, minus these two in terms of calories, which equals 1,633 calories divided by four, which is how many calories per gram carbohydrates is, which leaves us with 408 grams of carbohydrates or 1,633 calories worth of carbs, which means my macronutrients, as an example at the moment, are baseline, 2,898 calories, protein, 161 grams, fat, nice, grams, carbs, 408 grams, but it's important to mention that fat and carbs, they're much more interchangeable than this. Generally, the only gospel metric that I focus on is 161 grams of protein. I aim to hit that as a minimum each and every day at the moment, and then I can play around with these a little bit more depending on what I want to eat, what I have access to, etc., etc., etc. Moving on, approach number one. So this is what I do on a daily basis, and this is how we balance the books with a daily intake. So using myself as an example again, the premise is simple. I recommend, we recommend that you eat back around 80 to 90% of what you burn through cardio focused training. Why 80 to 90% you ask? Are there any studies you can reference, Fergus? The answer is no. It is purely the logic that smartwatches, trackers are inaccurate. They generally overestimate the studies coming, coming out that show just how inaccurate they are. But best case scenario is they are as far ahead of the estimations as the science is. So use them as a loose metric and then just take a little bit off to account for the margin of error that can come from it. Simple as that. I have found that over time, this has helped with my body composition goals using that formula. So it's a recommendation. You can eat 100% back if you wanna cheat the system and have some more calories, or you can eat even less if you want to. If it's a good way for you to manipulate yourself into a deficit, then you can eat back less of what you burn. They also account for your BMR, which are calories that you would have burned anyway just by existing into the calorie output that they give you at the end of an activity. So the active calories burned are what we want to consider. So again, 80 to 90% loosely brings us back closer to that specific figure. 
Hope that makes sense. Any questions at any stage, by the way, do of course just drop them in the comments down below. So moving on, let's use a training week as an example so you can actually see what this would look like within the context of training. So using my 2,900 calorie baseline with the format of day, session, additional expenditure through a tracker, and then what I would eat that day with the 90% applied. This will all make sense in a second. So here we have a training week as an example. This isn't what I'm doing currently. This is just an example I've used in the previous version of this video to paint a bit of a picture of how things might look. So Monday, 45 minute interval session on the track. Let's say we burnt 500 calories doing that. We times that by 0 0.9 and we add that to our baseline of 2,900, which leaves us with 3,350 calories. The same through the rest of the week. I'm not gonna talk through it in too much detail because you can see it for yourself. But generally speaking, as you can see on the days where I'm just lifting, I don't eat back any additional calories. On the days where I'm lifting and running, for example, I eat back the running calories. On the days where I've got double cardio sessions, I will eat back the calories from both sessions combined. And times in them all by 0 0.9 leaves us with a daily intake to consume. So 2,900 calories is what I eat when there is nothing else to consider. When there is additional expenditure to consider, I times it by 0 0.9 and eat it back on that day. And that is a really close degree of accuracy to the context of a 24 hour window so that you can, in theory, somewhat optimize your recovery and your nutrition around the actual demands of your training on a day to day basis. As you can see, at the end of the week, we've got a big brick session where 2000 calories are burned, which means that my calorie intake for that day is quite high at 4300 calories. So that's generally where I'll have a couple beers. I'll order a Domino's, I might make a big bowl of pasta, that sort of thing. That's where ultimately I enjoy consuming things that I look forward to a little bit more because I've got the calorie wiggle room without needing to exceed any parameters or in any way feel guilty about the fact I've just nailed a whole tub of Ben & Jerry's as we sometimes tend to do. So moving on, we have approach number two, which is doing it as a weekly intake. And using the same example, if we were to have a predictable and consistent training schedule like you would in one of our 16 week training programs, I put the sort of website screen recording on the screen for you now so you can see what is available. Whole range of goals that you can train for with one of those, but it means that you've got full visibility of what training is to come so you can predict your calorie expenditure accordingly. If that is the case and you've got a predictable training schedule rather than a highly variable one like I do, then you can do it on a weekly basis. So the total additional excess of baseline expenditure from this training week here was 4,750 calories. And if we times 4,750 by 0 0.9, we're left with 4,275. Then we take our daily baseline for the week, which is 2,900, we times it by seven, that leaves us with 20,300. And then we add this, which is the total additional caloric expenditure for the week of 4,275. And that leaves us with 24,575 calories for the week. So what do we then do? We divide it by the week to get a daily intake to work with. So 24,575 divided by seven equals 3,510. So that means I would consistently eat 3,510 calories each day to balance my energy input and output. So there's some pros here, there's some cons here. The pro is it means that you've got a predictable day-to-day -day caloric intake that you are always working within, which means that if you're the sort of person who wants to eat the same thing at the same time every day for habit's sake, then this is great. If you get hungrier on rest days, then this is a good way to do it. But it does mean that if you get really hungry after some endurance activity, then you're not gonna have as many calories to play with. And again, going back to that sort of bro science -y theory that if you're eating a lot of your calories around the exercise itself and the expenditure itself, it might lend itself better to overall recovery. Who knows, I'm stabbing in the dark there, but it's worked thus far for me, so give it a go if you want. Ultimately, I think the main things to consider are, do you get hungry on rest days or do you get exceptionally hungry around big training days? If you get hungry on rest days, the weekly intake might work. If you get more hungry around big training days, then doing it daily will give you that wiggle room on those days to have more food to play with. So moving on to some key nutrient considerations. I don't want to teach you to suck eggs at all, but just a few things to consider as these questions come up quite often. Both approaches, we recommend that the majority of additional sort of intake on top of your baseline comes from carbohydrates. Sorry, keto gang, time to shimmy yourselves away. But obviously your protein and fat intake will just rise periodically with that because we're not gonna just tell you to nail bowls of white rice or just chin pints of honey as that wouldn't be much fun for anyone. But the Z's era, we've all seen stranger things. People were chinning raw eggs for 
periods of time. So you do you, boo. You do you. Anyway, food quality is something that's also important to consider. Balancing our energy expenditure with our goals isn't the only consideration. Yes, calorie deficit, calorie surplus, bro. You want to be optimizing for overall health as well. Like you should be eating your fruits and veggies. Yes, this is your mother speaking. But you'll want to optimize your nutrient intake because it'll help performance, it'll help recovery, it'll help your cognitive ability, and there's a whole load of things that you should just, just do it, okay? Cheers, thank you, nice, he says, having had like one vegetable today. It's not rocket science, but we want to prioritize whole foods the majority of the time, eat fruit and veg the majority of the time, and then eat pizza and Pop-Tarts some of the time if you want to. And I say again, from my personal experience, I tend to factor that in around my big training days on a Saturday. Sometimes I'll save 500 calories or so from my Saturday expenditure when I've got big training sessions and I'll let them spill over into my Sunday so that I can have a latte and a big slice of cake and then have a normal day's food on top of that. You can manipulate it however you want, but ultimately if you are balancing strength and endurance training, you'll have a high calorie output. So you've got to be sensible with how you manage that across the week for what works best for you. But hopefully with those considerations, with approach number one or approach number two, you've got two pretty clear options that you can apply to your own situation at home. So final thing to note, probably one of the most important things as well for those watching, given that this is about balancing strength and endurance training. Endurance training when it comes to performance is about staying fueled. So on longer endurance sessions, anything over 60 minutes really, it's important to stay fueled for optimal output, optimal performance. And ultimately on race day and things, you wanna practice your nutrition strategy in training so that when it comes to race day, there's no surprises, you know what you're doing and you feel great. So general recommendation is 0.75 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per hour. So for me, that works out at, is it? Hang on, surely not, surely not, surely not. Nice. So what you consume to get there is largely down to you and what you already eat, what sits well with your stomach and your GI tract and what you process well, whether that's cyclodextrin, maltodextrin, play around with these things in your training and you can ascertain what works best for you. But please, please don't wait until race day to give it a go because you might end up having a rather infant-like experience in your pants, shall we say as well as just being really quite uncomfortable, which I've had. You don't want to have an upset stomach on an Ironman. It's not good fun. Aero position isn't all that great. And when you're trying to be as aero as possible, you don't want a, an upset tummy to be the thing that stops you from, from sitting in it. So trial and error to find out what works best for you. Sodium, big, big whole other category. We recommend getting your sweat tested because there's two elements to your sweat. There is the volume, which is how much we sweat. And there is a the composition, which is how much actual sodium we sweat out. So for some people, they might sweat loads, but actually not sweat out much sodium at all. For some people, they might not sweat very much, but they might sweat out a really high concentration of sodium. So it's therefore important for you to figure this out so that you can determine what sodium intake should be in your intra-workout nutrition. If you're doing a six, seven hour bike ride, you wanna be getting your sodium intake steady with your carb intake so that you're managing your electrolyte balance effectively. I've put a link in the description where you can go to some sweat testing centers if you are based in the UK to have your sweat volume and composition tested so that you can optimize what products you are consuming when it comes to sodium and carbs as a drink throughout your training sessions. Alongside that, bananas, gels, dates, dried fruit, squares, bars, squashies, sweets, loads of things you can play around with. It's ultimately a balance of what is easiest to carry on your person if you're ultra running, if you're riding a bike, whatever it is, play around with it, whatever works for you. At the end of the day, you just wanna be keeping yourself fueled through carbohydrates, fast acting fuel. There's lots of ways to skin that proverbial cat. Trial and error is the name of the game here. Last general consideration is to keep protein, fiber and fat low on your intra workout nutrition. It should be carbon sodium dominant. So things like protein bars are not gonna sit very well in your stomach. It's not gonna give you what you need to be able to metabolize to turn that into the fuel that you need to keep moving forwards. Yes, have that as after recovery for, for sort of food afterwards, but generally speaking, if you're really stacking fiber on fiber over six hours, we're gonna go back to that situation that I described earlier that no, one, no one's really after, especially not the uh, cleanup staff at the race. So anyway, that is pretty much it from my end in terms of how we recommend putting your nutrition together as a hybrid athlete. This is the method that I've used for the past sort of four or five years where I've really been training like this and been achieving things in the space that I think are sort of testament to how this approach 
can work because we're obviously balancing different stresses. From a programming point of view, that's where Omnia comes in. From a nutrition point of view, this is the foundation that underpins all that. And we all know nutrition is as much a part of the process, progress and execution as the programming is. So if you're interested in any programming from our end, then you can head to Omni Performance Instagram, myself or Johnny on Instagram. Website's just there and the YouTube thing at the bottom is probably quite redundant given you are currently on my YouTube channel, but nonetheless, there it is if anyone's wondering. So top link in description for Omnia Performance's website where you can check out all the training plans, training programs and one-to-one -one offerings that we have. With all of those, you do get access to our nutrition partners, PH Nutrition, who will cover you at varying levels depending on what product you sign up for. So all of this information is, is sort of underpinned by these principles and the information that you will receive follows the same line of logic. But hopefully that's been informative in terms of how you can manage your nutrition as a hybrid athlete. If at any stage you've thought, wow, Fergus, what an exceptionally cool t-shirt. I know. Please do shop Gymshark through my link in the description. It does me a solid as well as you a solid by making you look solid in their sick clothing. So thank you very much. If you want 10% off Human24 to optimize your supplementation and circadian rhythm management at any point around all these nutritional considerations, then please use the description down below. And if you would like a free month of Whoop to understand your holistic well-being and lifestyle tracking on a day-to-day -day basis, as I very much enjoy doing so, then use the link down below for your first month free. There are also a whole load of other links in there that you can engage with. All of the brands are very value driven and I'm very, very proud to work with them all. So please do go and check them out and see if there's anything that you fancy. Other than that, just a quick reminder to smash the like button. That's such a Twitch streamer thing to say. I'm sorry, but I have said it, but just pummel the thing, please. Do hit subscribe and do please comment down below with your thoughts, feelings, and share this video with a friend for anyone that you think might gain some value from it. Other than that, I am going to consume some of the calories that I have alluded to on the screen here and go and do a turbo trainer session into some track intervals. Thank you very much. Goodbye.